Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon coming to you today with another special emergency episode about Yellowstone National Park. As you may know, in mid-June 2022, historic unprecedented rainfall led to extreme levels of flooding in Yellowstone. Many important roads and highways were damaged and some were completely washed out. As a result, the park was closed, evacuated, and the Park Service has made some important changes. First of all, we have some good news. The park will reopen on June 22nd. A partial reopening, just the southern loop of the park. So that northern loop that sustained most of the damage will remain closed until further notice. If you'll recall, Yellowstone has basically a figure eight highway system or road system running through it and the northern loop of that figure eight is going to be closed until further notice. Basically everything from Norris Geyser Basin over to Canyon Village south will be opened back up on June 22nd. So great, are they gonna let everybody in? No. <laughs> no, not exactly. Two important entrances are going to be closed until further notice. We're talking about the north entrance and the northeast entrance, mm -hmm. and one major loop will be closed. Yes. Therefore, you're gonna have a lot of traffic coming through on the southern loop. The park needed to quickly figure out a way to restrict that traffic flow through that southern loop so that everyone can have a more enjoyable visit to Yellowstone. The National Park Service consulted with the gateway communities in the area and they've come up with a plan called ALPS, the Alternating License Plate System. Yes, because you know the government, they love an acronym. <laughs> um, Everybody loves an acronym. <laughs> so to clarify, you do not need a reservation to visit Yellowstone, you do not need a ticket, Correct. you do need your typical National Parks Pass. Yes. So that has not changed. What has changed is your entrance status will be determined by your vehicle license plate. So what does this mean? Basically, you need to know your license plate number before you arrive and plan accordingly. Anyone with a license plate that ends in an odd number can only go into the park on odd days of the month. If you've got an odd numbered plate, you're gonna go in on the 13th and the 15th and the 17th. If you've got an even numbered plate, that means the last number on your license plate is an even number, then you're gonna go in on even numbered days. Well, I know you're gonna ask this question, what about people with personalized plates? That's right, if you have a personalized plate like us, see more, then what do you do because you don't have a number? Well, people with personalized plates that are all letters and no numbers are going to be included in the odd group. So if you have a personalized plate with no numbers in it at all, like us with Seymour, then we will go in on odd numbered days. Now, if you have a personalized plate that does contain a number in it somewhere, like a four or a two, then you're gonna go by whatever the last digit is in your personalized plate and go according to that. So if it's an even number, even days, odd number, odd days. So know that you will not be able to go into the park on concurrent days. So, you know, you'll have a break day off between your days that you're able to visit. So if you're planning, just know that you're gonna to need to give yourself a little more time to get in the same number of days. I guess unless you're going from the 31st to the 1st, that would be too odd in a row. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> and by the way, the number zero will be treated as an even number in the Alps system. If you have a reservation for an overnight stay within the park, whether it's a hotel, a campground, or a backcountry permit, you will be allowed entry throughout the duration of your reservation. So you won't have to worry about your license plate number being an even or odd number. You just show them your reservation for your overnight stay and you can come and go as you please. Commercial use operators and active commercial use permit holders will be able to enter no matter what day. So if you have a tour planned, don't be worried about that potentially being canceled because they will be able to come in every day without a problem. Also, if you are traveling in a motorcycle group, I know this is an issue because everybody has different tag numbers. What do you do? Motorcycle groups will be treated as one and they will enter on even days only. So if you are in a motorcycle group traveling, even days only are where you need to plan. 
And then of course, people with essential services like employees or mail people or UPS people or whatever, contractors, they'll be allowed in no matter what. So just keep that in mind when you're planning. The one situation I can think of where this is going to be an issue is family or friends that are traveling together. If you're traveling with family and friends and you have different tag numbers for different days, I'm not sure what to tell you with that as far as... I think you're going to have to carpool. I think you're going to have to carpool and just cram as many people into one vehicle as possible. Otherwise, you're just going to be out of luck. So you just sort of have to roll with the punches with this. I think this is a great system as far as being able to implement it easily and quickly. So kudos to the Park Service for coming up with this. I'm impressed that they, they thought to do it this way. And hopefully it will go smoothly so that we don't get kicked into a reservation or timed entry system. So it's a little bit uh, different to say the least. I've never been to a park that used this kind of system, but the National Park Service had to figure out something quickly and this is the interim policy. They are studying a reservation or ticketing policy that could be implemented three to four weeks in the future. Yes, and that will be based on whether or not this ALPS program, alternating uh, license plate system, is successful or not. So if it turns out to be, I think, super easy, they're gonna stick with it, but if it starts causing problems or if it's just a total pain, then they're gonna go to this reservation or ticket timed entry system, whichever one they decide on. I really hope it doesn't come to that because that's going to add a whole other level of planning and having to get in and make a reservation and it's just a big headache, I think. So hopefully this alternating license plate system will do the trick. We know you have questions and the National Park Service has launched a new web page with a lot of answers. And this is different than the address we told you last week. They have a new website address that's more permanent. So this one is going to be go, so go.nps.gov, which is G-O-V, slash yell flood, and that's Y-E-L-L F-L-O-O-D. So again, it's go.nps.gov slash yell flood and that's yell y-e-l-l f-l-o-o-d. So that has all of the most up-to-date information regarding closures, reopenings, frequently asked questions. If you have questions about a reservation that you have sometime in the future, check there. They've got information on that. They'll have all of the road reopenings and closures totally up to date there so pretty much any question you have can be answered on that website. We also as always encourage you to follow Yellowstone National Park on the various social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter at Yellowstone NPS. Just one other place that you can go to for updated information regarding road status within the park because they have said that they're going to be evaluating some of these other roadways and potentially open those in a couple of weeks or months time. So there are some places in the north that might reopen before all of the park roads close on November 1st for the season. And the place to go to find that information, you can either text 82190 to 888 for text alerts. And those will be up to date. You know, as changes happen, you'll get a text immediately. The other thing you can do is call this number for a recorded message that I think they update daily. That number is area code 307-344-2117. And then there's also a website that you can go to, which I find to be very helpful, that has a map that shows which roads are closed and open because I'm a very visual person. And if you're subscribed to our newsletter, be on the lookout because this week I'll have links to all of these things in the newsletter. So good reason to subscribe. But that website that you're going to go to is mps.gov slash yell, which is Y-E-L-L, slash plan your visit, slash park roads dot htm. So again, that's mps.gov slash yell, Y-E-L-L, slash plan your visit, slash park roads dot htm. And that will have all the latest information regarding road closures or reopenings, and it'll also have that map that you can reference. Something to know with regards to what will be open or closed within that southern loop. Closed will be Canyon Village Lodges and Cabins. So those will not be reopening on 
June 22nd. Also, the Canyon, Madison, Norris, and Lewis Lake campgrounds will all remain closed until further notice. Also, the Fishing Bridge Visitor Center and Trailside Museum will remain closed until further notice. With regards to what's going to be reopening in that southern loop, the backcountry area will be accessible from roads, but it will be for day use only. Come July 1st, they will reopen the backcountry for overnight use. The other places that will reopen are Old Faithful, West Thumb, Grant Village, Bridge Bay, Fishing Bridge, Lake Village, and Norris Visitor Services. So all of those places will be reopening on June 22nd, and I'm sure they're trying their best to have it be business as usual. A lot of you out there who may have been planning to visit Yellowstone for the first time this year have some questions. Can you still have a quality visit to Yellowstone National Park with the North Loop closed? In my opinion, yes, you can. You can still visit many of the most famous destinations in Yellowstone with the South Loop open. I'm talking about Old Faithful, Norris Geyser Basin, Grand Prismatic Spring, Canyon, Lake Yellowstone. So you will still have a great visit to the park if you can hit these highlights. And there'll still be plenty of wildlife to see in these areas. Lots of things to do, lots of great hikes to take. Don't be totally down if you have this trip planned and part of the park is gonna be closed. Because trust me, you could spend a lifetime in Yellowstone and not see it all. Take this as an opportunity to thoroughly explore that Southern Loop and then next time you'll go back and explore the northern half. And you know, something else to consider, and this is speculation, the traffic may be down in Yellowstone this year because a lot of people, when they heard news of the flooding, canceled their plans. Right. And so it may end up being a fantastic time to visit this South Loop. So maybe you'll get to see more wildlife and have an even more enjoyable time in these certain scenic areas. So to look on the bright side, it could <laughs> up being a fantastic year to visit Yellowstone. Yeah. And as always, we really encourage everyone to be patient and cooperative with the park staff. They are doing the best that they can under very trying circumstances to pull this together so everyone has a wonderful summer at Yellowstone. And Please. remember, a lot of these people live in these communities that have been devastated by this flooding. So not only are they dealing with it from a work perspective, but they're dealing with it on a personal level as well with their own homes and vehicles and you know being cut off from other parts of the towns and so you know they're dealing with a lot beyond just their job. On that note a lot of these gateway communities really rely on the tourism Absolutely. that happens during this critical summer season. So if you have plans to go visit Yellowstone, don't lose hope. I think you can still have a wonderful visit. Yeah. And by the way, there's a lot to do in all of these gateway communities as well. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about all of that stuff in a future video that's yeah. coming very soon. So that's it guys, yet another special emergency episode of Long Long Honeymoon. We're going to stay on top of this Yellowstone National Park situation. And anytime we hear significant breaking news about the status of the park and the road closures, we're going to make a video about it. So if you're new to Long Long Honeymoon, we invite you to subscribe to our channel. We've been doing this channel on YouTube for a long, long time. And Yellowstone is perhaps our favorite place on earth. So we'll definitely definitely bring you the latest information when we have it. Yes, and again, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, please do so because I send out a newsletter after we post every new video that has a link to the video and it'll also have some other information regarding things we talked about in the video or links like we're talking about today that you can reference really easily. You can sign up for our newsletter by going to our website at longlonghoneymoon.com. We would love to have you join. And on that note, in the description of this video, we will put links to all of these government resources that we've mentioned and also links to the newsletter sign up and so forth. Yep. Until next time, what do we say here on Long Long Honeymoon? We say lo lo ho. Hang in there, Yellowstone. It's gonna be fine. I think uh, people need to keep going, you know? Go and enjoy it. There's a lot to do. You'll, you'll have plenty to do. Trust me.
Until next time, what do we say here on Long Long? <laughs> <laughs> You're so close. I know. <laughs>